Hey everyone. So this weekend I've got a couple of projects, well actually one major project that I want to get done on the Cobra plus a few updates. Um, let's get started with the updates. So first one is, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen uh, this angle a whole lot of times and you'll notice that the valve covers have changed. Uh, I picked up a set of these um, Cobra valve covers. Um, <clears throat> somebody on the Factory 5 group who had them and uh, wanted to change them out to something else sold them to me. So I really like how those look. I think it makes the engine look a whole lot better than the Edelbrock ones that were on there before. Um, I am not 100% sure if they clear the rockers without spacers. Um, it's, it's, uh, if, if they don't clear, it's definitely very close. So what I really need to do is just bar the engine over um, and make sure you get the, basically get the valve covers in. Um, kind of loose with bolts and then uh, bar the engine over, make sure that it doesn't seem like they're touching. Um, maybe get some modeling clay or something as well, put under there and just see how much clearance I do have. They are supposed to be able to clear roller rockers and high lift cams. Um, this isn't a particularly high lift cam per se, but um, they are big roller rockers. So gotta double check that, but um, uh, that's, a, that's another item kind of checked off the list. Worst case, I can buy spacers. Another one is the spark plug wiring. So this one's probably less obvious to you and it definitely is still messy and needs to get um, cleaned up some. But um, as you can see by my uh, scratch pad over there, there's I, I've gone through a few iterations of how to wire these up. And the reason for, for the iterations is that first off, I came up with the setup at the bottom. Um, and I came up with that because I figured that if I wired, if I put the spark plug wires in this order, um, that they would have the shortest run to the to the coils. Um, caveat with that: keep in mind that the ignition system I'm using, the Ford EDIS, is a, is a wasted spark ignition. So what that means is it's firing off each of these coils. So so this. Each one of these coil packs has two coils in it, and each coil fires two spark plugs at a time. So on a V8 engine, you're getting a, uh, an ignition event every 90 degrees. Um, and because this is a cross-plane engine, the firing order, one, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight. And then you see one, uh, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight. So you've got two uh, instances where you have spark plugs firing on the same side. What that means is that ultimately when you've got a wasted spark set up like this, you're gonna have to have spark plug wires crossing over from one side to the other, um, at least if you mount the coils the way I did. Other option would be to mount them um, basically where my scratch pad is like they did on the Explorers, but I didn't like that setup as much, so. Um, anyway, so if you look on the EDIS documentation, it um, basically you've got, here's your module, you've got four pins on that module that are used to fire each of the four coils, um, with each coil having two cylinders. And those are A, B, C, D. And if you look at how they're wired um, from the factory, they do A, B going to um, a, B, and then C, D going to C, D. So I was, I was kind of, I, I wanted to go with this route. I was sort of concerned that there might be some electrical wizardry going on in the coils or in the module where if I changed up that A, B, C, D order that it was going to start to cause problems. Um, just so happens that a guy that I used to work with uh, 10 or 15 years ago used to work at Ford, and he actually worked on the EDIS system when it was um, in development and in production. So I sent him a message and said, hey, um, am I gonna cause any problems if I do this? And he said, no, uh, there's no kind of crosstalk or anything that's going on in between. It's just, um, that was just how they, how they named it. So great. Um, long story short, what that means is that I still have to keep my pairs to, um, I still have to keep the pairs together. So 
way I've written it up there, one and six have to be on the same coil, five and three have to be on the same coil, four and seven, two and eight. But I can mix those up however I want. And what that's allowed me to do is, uh, since I bought these wires that were not custom made, the lengths were actually doing the standard A, B, C, D order. There were a few wires that were really tight and I wasn't happy with how those were being routed. Um, by changing the order around I've been, and the, changing the spark plug wires to fit the appropriate um, lengths, it, is, it now uh, runs a whole lot better, a whole lot more clearance. Um, nothing's tight, so I'm much happier about that. Um, obviously, I still have to clean it all up. Haven't done that yet, uh, but I'm going to get to that probably, probably after I do the first start. But um, yeah, so that part's good, and of course I needed to get that figured out before I start. Uh, my next project, which is wiring, um, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I'll come back here to the air conditioning for just a second. And so I, I changed my hoses around, and I can't remember if I mentioned that in the last video or not, but I'd had these, um, the fill ports up under the engine bay. And the more that I looked at it, and the more that I thought about it, the more I realized that I was really gonna be better off keeping those ports back here. It's going to make it a whole lot easier to service the system and it helps with clearance in a couple of areas under the hood as well. So I reversed the hoses. Um, however, these stick, these fill ports stick up. Um, and what I, so what I've, what I'm going to do, I haven't ordered them yet, but uh, Vintage Air makes a couple of, excuse me, 90 degree fittings that will come off of these ports on the compressor and just go up. 90 degree and then that's going to do a couple of things for me one it's going to let me put these these fill ports on the side so that they don't take up as much vertical space but the other thing it's going to let me do is orient these hoses kind of however i see what whatever is going to work the best and so i think that that's going to do a whole lot for me in terms of being able to route the hoses in a better manner um so i'd I'd sort of thought that the air conditioning might be the first system that I actually, uh, well, first system other than the brakes, I guess, that I got working, but, um, uh, so this will take a little bit longer, but that's just fine. So now to the big project for the weekend, and that is wiring. So when I bought the uh, micro squirt, in a previous video, I talked about where I was gonna put the micro squirt, um, decided to put it right there. They make a couple of options for what harnesses you get. Um, I got the, uh, you don't have to get a harness at all. You can make one yourself. I got the pre-wired pre harness that um, was the longer of the two. I wanna say, I wanna say 30 inches, but I feel like this is longer than that. Um, it's definitely longer than that. So uh, whichever one was longer. Um, and this has wires for all of the different pins. Uh, and it has shielded wire for the VR sense signals. Um, I'll get to what I'm gonna do with these in a minute. But, um, so the first thing I did was I went through the wiring diagram, figured out which wires I was going to use and where I wanted them to be. And so now what I've done is I've gone through and I've taken, these are the wires that are going to the engine bay. Um, these three wires are going to the instrument panel. Um, one of them is for the O2 sensor. One of them is for um, an idiot light that's going to be driven by the um, driven by the micro squirt, and the other one is the tack output. I'm going to try using the tack output from the micro squirt first, um, rather than trying to do something with the EDIS module. So, so those are the three wires I ran. These are all the wires that um, exist that I'm not going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them off at some point. Haven't decided where yet, and then. Um, basically just cap the ends and tie them off somewhere somewhere under here where they're gonna be out of the way, but that I can still get to them if I need them. Um, now, the VR wires, these are for uh, a crank sensor and a cam sensor if you're feeding those directly into the micro squirt. I am not. Um, I'm gonna be set using the cam sensor, or crank sensor rather, over there that's gonna go to the EDIS module over here and then that's going to send the signal to the micro squirt now the uh, the crank sensor 
need, and the signals going between the EDIS and the micro squirt need shielded wires. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut these wires off, um, splice them into the wires that need to have shielding, um, and then uh, I'll just do that. So kind of complicated, but um, really shouldn't be too bad. So my goal, uh, my goal for tomorrow is that uh, I can get all of the wiring um, under hood completed for both the ignition module and for the micro squirt. There'll be a few, obviously I don't have the instrument, the dashboard ready yet, so I'm not gonna have those wires hooked up. And then there's a couple of other things like the 12 volt power, I'm not gonna have that finished up yet. But if I can get all of the sensors and, um, and uh, all of the ignition, major ignition wiring done tomorrow, um, I'll be pretty happy. So I think I'll probably just leave this video where it is. And then um, since this was kind of more of an update and uh, more thoughts on where I am, and then I think I'll just post a separate video um, about the actual wiring tomorrow uh, after I get that completed. So um, I think maybe one more thing before I close up is that uh, I've also spent some time thinking about the cooling, the coolant hose routing. Um, I think I covered that all previously, but you can kind of see, I think you can see down there that basically what I've ended up doing is I've got a 90 degree wire or hose coming, that's gonna come off of each of the heater core ports. Go over here, has a 90 degree that goes down to another 90 degree that then routes the hoses underneath this, the box here with the, uh, for the HVAC, and then around here to the engine. Um, it is definitely not as direct or as clean as routing it through the V. Well, it's not as direct as routing it through the V, but I think it's cleaner overall. Um, so one of the other items in the near future is gonna be hooking that up and then just putting water into the system and uh, firing up the water pump for the first time and seeing if I have any leaks. So I think that's all for this one. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, I'll have another update here shortly uh, before too long on the wiring.